Hi, before we get started, I'd like to remind you to please subscribe and share. And if you like what you see, please support us at patreon.com forward slash one leg up productions. And I'd like to personally invite you to a private Facebook group I started called Victoriously Living, where we remind each other that we're not victims of our circumstance, but conquerors. Today, I wanna to share with you my scuba diving experience. A few years ago, a gentleman approached me about the idea of scuba diving. Now, I had always thought that the underwater world would always be closed to me because of my disability. So as soon as someone shows me an opportunity to walk through a door to a world I thought would be closed, I jumped right on in. We prepared for the test and eventually the day of the test came. The test was taken place at my friend's pool and a gentleman from Virginia had flown in to help me do this test. Because of the disability, it requires something a little bit different from the regular scuba diving certification. So we all met and they asked me, do you have a problem breathing in through your mouth and breathing out through your nose? And I said, no, piece of cake. I know how to swim. I know how to hold my breath. I, I get how it works. So we go in to the pool and we submerge ourselves in the water with all of our tank and mask and, and air regulator. And the first task is to take the air regulator out of your mouth and put it back in. Now, mind you, I can't do it myself. So the person I had just met did it for me. And to be in a position where you are tr have to be in complete trust and in sync with that person, can be very difficult to, to do, especially when you just met them. But we did it, and we did it successfully. The second task was to remove your mask and put it back on underwater, which requires you to take off the mask, and then when you put it back on counterintuitively, tip your head back and blow out your nose so the water comes out of the mask. So they pulled off the mask and all of a sudden, the water began to flood my face, my eyes and my nose. And I immediately went into panic mode. I have never experienced panic. So they could obviously see I was panicking and immediately brought me up to the surface of the four foot water I was in. But as far as I was concerned, it could have been a hundred feet. I really felt like I was drowning. I began to hyperventilate, breathe really hard and fast. My heart started beating super fast and I began to cry and I had no idea why I was crying. In my mind, I can remember thinking, why am I crying? Why am I crying? And let me tell you, when you are crying coming out of the water, it is not pretty. Not only do you have tears coming down your face, but you have snot and water coming out of every crevice of your face. So not only was I in full panic mode, but I was also really embarrassed in front of these people. And they try to comfort me and say, it's all gonna be okay, um, don't worry people usually take two or three times to get through this. It is not an easy test. And I could have easily said, okay, you're right, it isn't. I don't think I'm cut out for this right now. I need to do this another time. But there was this guy from Virginia who had taken the time out of his vacation to do this with us. So I decided, no, I'm gonna do this. So after I pulled myself together, we went back under the water and we did the first task no problem. Then it was time to remove the mask. He removed the mask and again, the water started flooding my face. And again, I wanted to go into full panic mode. But instead, I had to slow my mind down so, so slow to each moment. This is so different from my normal mode of operation. My normal mode of operation is to think about 10 different things at the same time, to think ahead 
five steps ahead so I can foresee any problems that come up and I can already come up with solutions. So my brain is constantly moving. So to slow my mind down and to become present to each moment was a challenge for me. But it was the only way, the only way I was going to pass this test successfully. And we did. I passed all three test tasks for the test successfully. And after that, they pulled me around the pool and it was like I was flying. It was weightless. It was the most beautiful and peaceful experience I can recall ever having in my life. And it was the first time that I got what being present truly meant and the power and gratitude it gave me. You see, being present gives you time to appreciate the moment, to appreciate your breath, to appreciate the people around you, to appreciate the feeling that you have. And it gives you the power to create your thoughts intentionally. I had to be intentional about in this moment, the water is flooding my face. In this moment, I need to tip my head back. In this moment, I need to breathe out. It was one of the most beautiful experiences, hard, but beautiful experiences I've ever had in my life. I want to encourage you to be present. How do you do that? Eckhart Tolle, who made a living off this one concept of being present, suggests four ways to practice being present. The first is to slow down. Slow your body slow your thoughts down. The second is to avoid multitasking. And I don't just mean physically avoid multitasking, avoid multitasking in your mind. Avoid thinking 10,000 thoughts in a day. Only think the thought you have right now. Third, spend time in nature. There's something about nature that grounds us. Go outside with your shoes off, feel the grass, look at the trees, look at the breeze rustling the leaves of the trees. Maybe you're by water, watch the stream, the ripples in the water and how they ebb and flow through the rocks. One of the reasons we move, moved out of the city and into the country was so we could be closer and more in tune with nature. And finally, he says to meditate. Even if it's five minutes of your day, take five minutes of your day to meditate, maybe on an affirmation, maybe meditate on something you want more of in your life, like peace or abundance or love. But how do you become present when there's so much to do in life. I have kids, I have a job, I have friends, I have to go to grocery shopping, I have to go to this meeting. We are bombarded by things that we have to do in our lives. So how do you be present when all of you is being pulled in so many directions? These are ways that you can do it and you will be better off for it. Not only you, but your kids will be better off for it because when you get to spend and be present with your children, be present with your spouse, be present with your coworkers, everybody will benefit. They will feel that because I don't know if you've ever had the experience of being with somebody and they're there physically, but they're not really there. That is a gift 
that you give to them. So I encourage you to, to practice being present and share below with me how are some things that you could, what are some things that you could do to practice presence? And what would being present open up for you and your life? Please comment below. And again, if you'd like to participate more intimately, get to know each other better, please go to our private Facebook group called Victoriously Living. Again, if you'd like to support us, you can also visit patreon.com forward slash one leg up productions and interact with us there as well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this has helped you. Thank you and be blessed.